two contemporary uh, examples of Mormon immorality were found in The Godmakers and The Evangel. Both discussed sexually active teenagers and accused the church of creating an atmosphere where such activity and subsequent out-of-wedlock births would be so prevalent. In fact, the Evangel article, Teenage Immorality, ended by stating, quote, yet the fact that it, meaning teenage uh, pregnancies, happens to the extent it does in Utah is evidence that Mormonism does not improve morals. Indeed, the numbers appear to show that except for a minority of Utah's Mormons, being a member of the LDS Church actually erodes moral values, end quote. Ignoring the fact that Utah teenage pregnancies continue to be well below the national average. However, the evangel is following the well-known anti-Mormon mantra, the truth should never get in the way of a great sensational accusation. <laughs> the same insinuation of the church creating the perfect climate for immoral activity can be found in a multi-issue series of the Utah Evangel titled Child Sexual Abuse and the LDS Church, A Personal Journey. This series of articles describe the experience of Jeff McAllister who was abused over a long period of time by his bishop. In introducing the subject, McAllister wrote, quote, while the problem crosses many lines, certain teachings and practices in the LDS Church lead to a real problem with this kind of abuse, end quote. A very recent, and very public example can be given to better illustrate the misinterpretation of facts, the misunderstanding of personal actions versus church doctrine and procedure, and ultimately an underlying bias against the church. This is a direct result of misinformation, which if not actually planted by old as well as contemporary anti-Mormons, has certainly been reinforced by their propaganda being promulgated, both in print and in different media, such as the internet. This past March, young Elizabeth Smart was found alive and well in Sandy, Utah. Her kidnapping the previous June had made news not only in Utah, but across the country and indeed around the world. However, very soon after her rescue, rumors began to filter out to the media that Elizabeth Smart's captors were religious fanatics with a connection to the LDS Church, and that she had been kidnapped in order to become a polygamous wife. Although the media, um, <clears throat> although the media attempted to distinguish between the mainstream church and its various offshoots, more often than not, all were mixed together, and the resulting newspaper and television reports blurred the lines to the point that the average reader or listener would not be able to differentiate between the various groups. Moreover, at the public announcement of the charges against David Brian Mitchell and Wanda Barzi, smart seductors, the rumors and suggestions of sexual assault were confirmed. For many critics of the church, the charges of sexual assault incomprehensibly reconfirmed for them previously held notions of Mormonism and immorality. An email sent to various news outlets and other places by an Arizona woman claiming to be a doctor made incredible accusations which appear to reflect some of the themes of anti-Mormonism. Quote, if I were 15 years old, in excellent athletic health and could run, rich, talented, popular, a virgin not used to sex, had a great family and family to return to, I would find a way to escape my abductor. I would have found the right moment with God's help and fled. All of our alarms are going off when a 15-year-old beautiful girl does not find an exit from a pedophile who is not threatening her with a knife or gun. I have watched a TV program about the Mormon religion and the religion that a, and the belief that a father, uncle, or male household authority figure feels he has the right to introduce his daughter to sex. The daughter is taught that she is to accept sex from male spiritual leaders. It is my opinion that this situation could have occurred because the daughter had been repeatedly introduced to sex by male religious leaders. This was a familiar situation to her." Unquote. This supposed doctor was not alone with accusations of Mormon immorality, child abuse, and other problems. One, uh, one online essay titled, About Elizabeth Smart on Polygamy, referred to plural marriage as, quote, a hideous, disgusting legacy that will forever haunt the annals of Mormonism, end quote. And another accused the church of permitting 
quote, abuses of women and children, end quote. John Krakauer also discussed the Elizabeth Smart case. His book mentioned Mitchell's desire to make Smart, quote, a polygamous concubine, end quote. Krakauer concluded uh, Smart would have been susceptible to Mitchell's, quote, weird self-styled wedding ritual to seal Elizabeth Smart and himself in the new and everlasting covenant a Mormon euphemism for polygamous marriage, end quote. He then explained, quote, raised to obey figures of Mormon authority unquestioningly and to believe that LDS doctrine is the law of God, she would have been particularly susceptible to the dexterous fundamentalist spin Mitchell applied to familiar Mormon scripture. The white robes Mitchell and Barzee wore and forced Elizabeth to wear resembled the sacred robes she had donned with her family when they had entered the Mormon temple when Mitchell bullied Elizabeth into submitting to his carnal demands, he used the words of Joseph Smith, words she had been taught were handed down by God himself to phrase these demands, end quote. To back up his claim, Krakauer quoted Debbie Palmer, a former fundamentalist plural wife and currently an anti-polygamy activist, quote, being brought up as she was made, uh, as she was, made her especially vulnerable. Mitchell would never have been able to have such power over a non-Mormon girl, end quote. These two statements demonstrate not only a bias that any decent scholar or journalist would seek to avoid, but also a profound ignorance of Mormon doctrine and practice. Two examples will suffice. First, Krakauer stated that Elizabeth would have worn temple robes when she accompanied her family into an LDS temple. This, of course, is patently false, as she was born in the covenant and I know that because I checked Ancestral Bible. Um, <laughs> she would not have gone into any part of the temple but where youth are allowed to go, such as the baptismal font. Even if she had not been born in the covenant and had been later been sealed to her parents, she would not have worn the temple robes as she had not personally gone through the endowment ceremony. Secondly, the statement by Debbie Palmer is ridiculous when carefully analyzed. Palmer moved with her... Um, with her parents to the fundamentalist community of Creston Valley, British Columbia, when she was two years old. She was raised in this community and entered into her own plural marriage when she was 15 years old. Eventually, she left the fundamentalist LDS church and has been an outspoken critic of Mormon fundamentalism. Therefore, for Palmer to speak as an expert on whether or not Mitchell would have influence over a girl who has been raised in the LDS church, it's like comparing broccoli to cauliflower, Broccoli may have come from cauliflower, but it is now significantly different and is considered a completely separate uh, vegetable. From the questionable background and immoral character of Joseph Smith to the licentious teachings and practices of Mormonism and its adherents, both old and new anti-Mormon works have trumpeted the supposed problems of the prophet and members of the church. Remarkably, the themes have not changed that much from the earliest days. Significantly, Accusations of immorality have extended from Joseph Smith to the church membership as a whole. However, of a necessity, tales and tactics have changed over time. For example, with the availability of the temple ceremony on audio and videotape, tales of the temple ceremony rarely include accusations of actual sexual intercourse taking place, unlike some works in the past. Instead, most modern anti-Mormons only suggest an innate sensuality in certain parts of the ceremony. Furthermore, while stories of sexual abuse, um, underage brides, and other stories are told about fundamentalist offshoots, most readers would be too sophisticated or skeptical to unquestionably believe accounts of innocent virgins kidnapped and held in the temple for the pleasure of the Mormon elders. Even so, some of the imagery remains, with the problems of fundamentalist polygamy being projected onto the mainstream uh, church in sensationalistic descriptions as a result of the supposed original evil introduced by Joseph Smith. Continuing in that theme are the stories of moral problems among Mormons in general as a result of their history and doctrines. 